Hey everyone, welcome back to Hardware News for the week. This one, we're announcing a live stream of ours, which might turn into a 1v1 me bro versus Buildzoid later. I'm sure that'll end poorly for me, but whatever. We are also talking about a lot of huge news in the industry. One of the news items is about China and a court order temporarily banning the sale of Micron devices in China. There's also news on Intel 9000 series, not necessarily 9th gen, but 9000 series CPUs and some news on NVIDIA GTX 1160s and 1180s as leaked oops by Lenovo, an official partner. Before that, this video is brought to you by Thermal Grizzlies High-End Thermal Paste and Liquid Metal. Thermal Grizzlies Cryonaut is an affordable, high-quality thermal compound that doesn't face some of the aging limitations of other pastes on the market. Cryonaut has a thermal conductivity of 12.5 watts per meter kelvin, focuses on endurance, is easy to spread, and isn't electrically conductive, making it safe to use on GPU dyes. Thermal Grizzly also makes conductonaut liquid metal, which we've used to drop 20 degrees off some temperatures in our delitted tests. Buy a tube at the link in the description below. So for the first thing, the GN news, the uh, live stream will be in a few days. So Wednesday, July 11th at 6 p.m. Eastern time on YouTube. And we're gonna be doing an 8086K overclock live, possibly with the good old Titan V that we've shelved since our RIP LTT stream. So it should be a lot of fun. Uh, in the stream, I'll set some goals for what fire strike score, whatever benchmark we use, we're trying to achieve, what frequency we're trying to achieve. I have not done anything with this 8086K yet. It just came in. My plans are to probably delid, apply liquid metal, something like that, put it under a big cooler, and we'll just see how far we can push it. Should be a lot of fun to watch and see if we can achieve the goals that we set forth with. And then the goal from there is to take that experience from that stream and hopefully do a 1v1 versus Buildzoid later on, where uh, the hope is that he'll be able to stream to an ingest server we have here, and then we'll take that video and manipulate it so that he loses. Actually, probably what we'll do is we'll take the video and be able to put out his stream and our stream at the same time through just the GN live stream. So you'll be able to watch both of us compete for overclocks against each other. Uh, spoiler alert, he will win. But I'll put up a really good fight, so it should be a lot of fun. And maybe he'll hold back some, uh, hold, pull some punches too while he's at it. Final news item from us is the limited edition shirt that I've been talking about, the foil shiny one is going to be uh, ending the pre-sale. That'll be it basically on uh, next week or this week, basically after the live stream will be ending sometime the next few days thereafter because we're almost out of inventory already and we want to hang on to at least a couple for when it actually arrives. If you didn't want a pre-sale, but if you want to definitely make sure you get one, pre-order it now on store.gamersnexus.net. It's limited edition. We will not make it again. And it's the uh, foil version of our 10 year anniversary shirt design. First real news item, Chinese court orders and a temporary ban on Micron component sales following a patent lawsuit. Micron has been issued a preliminary injunction halting the sales of more than 26 of their products in China, including DRAM and NAND. Initial reports indicated that this might have been much more significant than Micron seems to think it will be naturally because Micron's not gonna admit that it's going to kill their sales, but uh, they do have a good idea of what's happening too. So temporary ban is following a legal battle with UMC which is United Microelectronics Corporation, where a Chinese court ruled in favor of UMC following a patent infringement case brought against Micron by UMC. UMC sought action against Micron last January, and they accused Micron of infringing on their patents relating to memory and storage. The case itself is part of a bigger battle that's been going on for a while between Micron and UMC, where Micron maintains that UMC has acted as a conduit for theft of patents and trade secrets. And they're trying to, uh, Micron seems to be indicating that this is in effort of bolstering China's domestic memory ambition, something that the Chinese government has been interested in for quite some time now. Once news broke of the injunction, Micron stock fell as much as 8%, whereas UMC's rose by 3.9%, but there's a stock market, so that doesn't really mean a whole lot. Micron, following this news story, there is another one that's brand new. Micron issued a statement on this patent lawsuit, and related to the previous story, Micron said on uh, July 5th the following. 
The patent infringement claims of UMC and Jinhua were filed against Micron in retaliation for criminal indictments filed by Taiwan authorities against UMC and three of its employees and a civil lawsuit filed by Micron against UMC and Jinhua in the United States District Court for California for the misappropriation of Micron trade secrets. Micron expects the actual impact on this ban from the Chinese market to be less than 1% of its revenue for the year annualized. And the ban specifically outlaws some crucial and ballistics DRAM modules not a big dominator in the market anyway. Oh, that was a good pun, dominator. Which the DRAM modules for crucial and ballistics comprise under 2% of Micron's total annualized revenue. And the company states that it is on target to hit 8.0 to 8.4 billion for the year, which is what it targeted previously. The company is, however, appealing the case. And Micron also issued this further statement. Micron is disappointed with the ruling by the Intermediate People's Court, we strongly believe that the patents are invalid and that Micron's products do not infringe the patents. The court issued this preliminary ruling before allowing Micron an opportunity to present its defense. And related to this, Micron has filed its civil lawsuit against UMC in California. Intel News next. So there's been some discussion of potentially 9th gen or at least 9000 series 8th gen parts, the Coffee Lake lineup. Not clear on what's happening exactly yet with those, but we did receive some substantial documents relating to this, and then some of it's already been posted online. So between those two sources of information, what we know is the following. Basically, it's looking like there's going to be an i5 9400, 9500, 9600, 9600K. This is really not that surprising at this point. 9400T, and what we really need to know, though, is how these change versus the existing Coffee Lake lineup. So. Uh, first of all, this is something that Intel accidentally posted in its microcode revision guidance document. And we have all of them. One of them is 574 pages long and another one 60 pages of just CPUs and specifications. So the SKUs seem to retain the same core counts and TDP roughly for all the ones I just named. And the TDP envelope has their predecessors, but they ratchet up frequencies by 100 to 200 megahertz out of the box. And cache size and socket type all remain the same as well. What is additionally interesting, and we have some tables on this from, uh, from a, another website. We'll put the source on the table when we pop it up. But we have some tables with specs. Additional news, though, eight core parts can be seen referenced in the 574-page Intel document that we obtained. And I think they might have accidentally posted online as well. So this specifically identifies boost behavior for eight core products which means, yes, it is coming if you didn't already think that. And there's a rumored i9-9900K that is rumored to be 8-core 16-thread uh, or an i7-9700K rumored as 6-core 12-threads. None of that's confirmed, but it does seem likely that there will definitely be an 8-core part because Intel specified it in that document. As a quick aside for that news story, Intel is approaching their 50th anniversary and co-founder of Intel and father of Moore's Law, Gordon Moore, has offered some interesting insight to the history of the company. We'll post a link in our news document where we have the show notes. If you want to read it and get some history background, it's an interesting read and worth clicking on. Hit the link in the description below for the news document to pick up that link. Next up, very briefly, NVIDIA and some GPU leaks. So some of these are more legitimate than others because Lenovo, of all people, have been out there accidentally leaking things. Lenovo recently let slip that the Legion Y 530 laptop will ship with the GTX 1160, allegedly, which will apparently have six gigabytes of memory. We would assume it would be GDDR6 at this point, since that's what most, if not all, of the next series of GPUs will be using, at least on the high end. And this is after previously talking on camera about Lenovo's plans to push a GTX 1180 for its desktops in the 730 series of desktops when speaking with a gaming publication on YouTube, I believe called Brain Bean, where they accidentally said that an 1180 will ship down the road. Seagate is aiming to return to the consumer market. So the Seagate 600 and 600 Pro from 2013 were the last consumer-focused SSDs from Seagate. This week, the company announced that they plan to bring their Barracuda SSD to the consumer segment, albeit specs and prices at this point are scarce. The Anantec story notes that it most likely uses the Gen 64L 3D NAND 
and it has an unspecified controller. Barracuda is a 2.5 inch SATA based SSD with capacities up to two terabytes. And the drive offers speeds expectant with the SATA interface, 540 megabyte per second or so sequential read, and 520 sequential write 90K IOPS random read. At this point, we're against the SATA interface anyway. And there's also supposed to be a five year warranty, but uh, not super interesting. It's just Seagate's looking to come back to SSDs apparently. And then uh, some additional news here, hardware sales and GN news. One more note, this blueprint shirt I'm wearing, if you wanted it when we launched it, it sold out instantly. Thank you for those of you who picked it up. Took us a couple weeks to get it back in stock, but it's back now. So on store.gamersnexus.net, you can grab this or the limited edition shirt. If you want either one of those, they are in stock in basically all of the sizes that we carry. And we did pick up a couple of extra sizes for the blueprint shirts. And then uh, hardware sales. So GTX 1070 Ti's are still a good price right now. 4K monitors, we also noticed, are on pretty good discounts overall. So we'll post some links to those or pop new egg up on the screen while I'm talking right now with a couple of the sales that we saw for those. Uh, they do change basically every day at this point. But unfortunately, and I've checked, RX Vega 56 is still not that great of a deal. We really want it to be because if it gets closer to its original MSRP plan, that was a actually a really fun card to work with. One of the most fun GPUs we worked with last year in terms of tuning ability. And also pretty competitive at the target price and its original MSRP. It's just, it's still not down, unfortunately. Part of that is because Vega has retained its mining abilities, whereas the Pascal cards have fallen off a bit. So. Uh, unfortunately, we keep looking. We haven't seen any Vega sales yet, but we'll let you know as soon as we do because Vega 56 was actually a fun card to work with and pretty worth it at the right price. Vega 64, not so much just because 56 is so close to it already and you can flash it. But that's it for this one. As always, store.gamersnexus.net to pick up the stuff mentioned in this video. Go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus. Helps out directly there as well or get access to our Discord server. Subscribe for more. I'll see you all next time.